interesting. This is about sports betting. Now, before we went on vacation, of course, Biggie was saying he's doing pretty well with the NCAA tournament in sports betting. Yesterday, I happened to catch a little of the UFL game. Hmm. Every okay. better's dream. Or are you guys watching <laughs> UFL? No. Not yesterday. Is it Renegades game? No, I had Stallions on yesterday. Stallions. Stallions, Stallions Panthers. River Dogs? Birmingham, Michigan. Birmingham, Michigan. Up in the, up in the uh, Ford Field. Oh, they let them play there. Dozens on hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought they might still make them go to the Silver Dome. <laughs> America just does not like <laughs> spring football. No, we don't appear to. But I think the NFL, if they don't have a little hand in it, I think they're watching too. Well, they, I think there's players there. Well, now they took the kickoff. You know, the USFL, yeah. the way they did it, we just talked about that. Yeah, that's right. They, they, so they're adapting that rule to the NFL, surprisingly. But I think they watch a little bit. And actually, one of the players, his name's Taco Charlton, and he was a cowboy. And I remember when he got drafted. He was a first-round draft pick, and he plays for the Stallions. In fact, he got the game-winning tackle yesterday. Of course he did. Nonetheless, here's the whole point. As I was watching it, happened to be, I flipped over there. It's in the fourth quarter. I'm a Panther fan. Is Fox running these games? Yeah, this was on Fox. Fox and NBC own it, I think. This one was on Fox. It might have been like Fox Sports South or whatever, but it was on Fox. And... uh when I was watching, Michigan was trying to drive to win the game, and but they were the underdog, and I was cheering for them. And mm-hmm. by the way, uh, they were saying, remember, if they're down 10, they can score and uh, keep possession of the ball by going for it on 4th and 12 from the 28-yard line. So it was one of those. They didn't actually do that, but it was they talked about the rules a lot. The whole point I'm making is the announcers the entire time was, if Michigan kicks a field goal here again, the under will cover. But if Michigan scores a touchdown, that's going to give you the over. And they talked sports betting almost every play. you know. So it was very ingrained in that broadcast, yeah. in the UFL broadcast. Yes. And they were like, I know many of you are at home are paying attention to the catch made by so-and-so. That's his fourth of the day. The over-under on his catches is four. And it's like, oh, my goodness. They They're really pushing it. I think – there they want to get people watching and that's the way to get people watching mm-hmm. yeah and they also had um that rules analyst dean blandino he was in like the u.s army command center and they had every video screen he was seeing and they talked to him after uh, after every play yeah. you know they would they would say what are you seeing here and he would mm. t- and, and mm. the players were interviewed on the field like uh, right after a, a touchdown pass the quarterback was interviewed you mm-hmm. know everybody's mic'd up a lot they? of access yeah yeah but the betting part of it was really interesting to me because almost every play they were saying there's 14 more yards for him. His over under is 80 yards. Huh. You know, a lot of interesting. They have to be pushing it just to get eyes. But that was well, to get money. I, I thought that was pretty smart. It's like yeah. okay, because otherwise, because you know you got baseball to bet on right now, of course, and the finals of the NCAA tournament are tonight. So there's a lot going on now. But if you're gonna do it, you know, you might as well because you can play. You bet on every play. You know, the a uh, couple things about that. One, I was watching. I guess it was. Sunday morning sports center, Mm -hmm. maybe. And um, they did 10 minutes on WrestleMania, but not one mention of the UFL. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised. They they don't even cover it. No. It doesn't exist. Oh, no. And they did 10 minutes on WrestleMania. Only only Fox covers it because they show it. I mean, I hear them talking about it. Because they own it. And what you may be hearing, too, and I think Biggie may have alluded to this uh, the last time we were all together, is that now – especially in the NBA and the college at the basketball level, players are getting yelled at by fans because you didn't, you did, couldn't get one more rebound. You know, I didn't hit a parley because you, you, you missed that free throw. Okay. So now yeah. the, the players are like, it's getting mm-hmm. way too close. Yeah. I, would I, say, them. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't remember which NBA player it was, but he's came out heavy on it mm-hmm. saying, you know, it used to be the opposing fans, mm-hmm. but now it's our own fans mm-hmm. saying, thanks buddy. You cost me a grand. Because you couldn't hit a foul shot, and and Kornheiser said, you know, this this could be a very slippery slope because if you're not an elite player, if you're not up, you know, a Steph Curry or a LeBron mm-hmm. James, and you're not making that kind of money, if you want to make a little money on the side, yeah, yeah you miss a rebound. Of course, yeah. There's a uh, there's a Raptor, a Toronto Raptor under investigation for that. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt that at all because they he was the highest what they call prop bet of the day twice now during the season, and it was for him to miss or to have under. One three pointer, like attempted or made, mm-hmm. and it just happens that those days where his prop bet was the highest, the first game he uh quote said he re injured his eye, he had mm-hmm. to leave the game with under with four minutes in, so his prop bet hit. So he didn't get the attempt. You know, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So so that he's under. I think he's been suspended. 
see if you would take this bet. My son, you know how my son will sometimes ask me strange questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, do you think this team would make the playoffs? Now, this is what he said to me the other day. All every, every player on the team in their prime. Okay. Would this NBA team make the playoffs? LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Chris Dim, and myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your son came up with you. Wow, that's a twist. Yeah, my, my Everyone in their up. prime? He said, everybody's in their prime, but you have to play a whole season. And he's like, forget about injuries. Nobody's going to get injured, but you, you just deal with everyday aches and pains. And he said, in their prime, <laughs> Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kareem, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dim and you. That's what he said to me. I take you guys. Yeah, you guys would win. I said, what are we going to do? M nothing. You two will just stand <laughs> on the side and look. But then it's five on three. It's five yeah, on three. but you'd guys still win. <laughs> You'll just be needed to set picks and block out. I could do I that. I can't set a pick I'll against Carl Malone. I'll set a pick. Want me to set a pick against Giannis? <laughs> I'll, I'll set a pick. And I'd shoot. I want, they're going to leave us open. They should <laughs> That's feed it true. out. That. They'll leave us open. We can make a couple of shots, you know. So yeah. that was his idea. <laughs> I'll let y'all take the fouls at the end. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if we could make the play. I mean, making the playoffs, that's no. a long What's that, top eight? Yeah, well. Top I, seven, top eight in the league? In, 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 well, it's more. It's like 14 make it, don't they? Like The East has seven or eight, no, and the West has seven so, or eight. Yeah. I feel like we could make it. I feel With those three on our team in their prime? To the playoffs. Get to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm taking you guys. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. It was a it was a strange twist. Yeah. And I listened to Biggie because Biggie is doing so much sports gambling. He's now a notorious gambler. We had <laughs> we have a guy here on the local Fox affiliate named Bob Buckley. He does something called the Buckley Report, which is long form reporting on different issues. And he tackled sports gambling and sports betting because it's new to our state now. And Biggie told us about this a few weeks ago, saying, well, it's you know in the works. We'll see. i got to clean up my place. Right. <laughs> I did. So, I have a TV crew coming in. Biggie was interviewed from his apartment about Was that the gambling. Ottoman Empire, Biggie? That yes. was, yeah. Yes, Biggie was sitting on the Ottoman. <laughs> yes, that's the place to be. Chris Tim calls it the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. His subjects below him. Oddly, Buckley was below and beside. Yeah. yeah. yeah you don't have a choice. Yeah. You had to figure out the best camera angle for that. You're amongst royalty, man. <laughs> All right. You sit here. Well, I need to be higher. I need to be looking over his shoulder. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, they're sitting on an ottoman in Biggie's, in front of his spice rack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> this freshly cleaned kitchen. <laughs> the best. Uh, yeah, I did end it. This is the angle you want, Bob. <laughs> Chris Dibb said, did you notice what Biggie said about his gambling? Because well, they interviewed not only Biggie, but of course, like experts. They had some professors. They had some folks who said, well, this is a big, a slippery slope that, uh, you know, these companies get you hooked in with free money. And then uh, before you know it, you're gambling too much. You know, all of those things. But Biggie played the part of the lovable rube. <laughs> <laughs> All I do is win. <laughs> That's what he said. They can say what they want. It's like, I just keep winning. Well, well, I should have been concerned when I asked who else was being interviewed, and yeah, they said like, two professors. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> oh, God. I know what role I'm playing. Right. <laughs> they sure did. <laughs> like, this Rube's who they're talking about. <laughs> I keep winning. Hey, they prey on the simple-minded. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my favorite part. Biggie's talking about his favorite team, the Chicago Cubs, and then Biggie says... <laughs> I like to play a parlay. You can do the Cubs just to win. Okay. It's uh, when you parlay things into two-leg, three-leg, four-leg parlays, um, that's when you can start winning money. Parlays win you money. What do the experts say? Yeah, parlays are awful. You should never do parlays. Parlays, are, <laughs> parlays benefit the book. It's good Literally reporting. The next line. <laughs> they cut right to the... <laughs> They cut right to the professor. He's like, oh, don't ever do a parlay. Great reporting. B Biggie says. <laughs> Fool's gold. Parlay's where you win money. Yeah, parlay's are awful. You should never do parlay's. Parlay's, uh, parlay's benefit the book. Even the reporter was chuckling. Bob Buckley's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so. You walk right into that one. <laughs> I've been set up by the media. <laughs> this got your journalism. This has got, got your journalism. journalism. <laughs> this man's living out of boxes. <laughs> He's had to change apartments now. He can no longer afford his rent. <laughs> yeah. Afford <laughs> rent. He lost his home. <laughs> well, you got to walk his own dog. Uh -huh. You got to do a parlay. Yeah, parlays are awful. <laughs> I mean, right after. <laughs> That's good cutting. That's yeah. gotcha journalism. Mm -hmm. We can't have that. He's setting me up, too.
What do you like? I like parlays. <laughs> <laughs> Winks to the cameraman. We got him. Got it. <laughs> but we already got the professor <laughs> saying right, yeah, the yeah, worst. Yeah. All right, order. pack it up. Yeah. Let's go. We got all we need. Gotcha. That's unbelievable.